In this short video tutorial, I want to give you a brief introduction to the theory behind Experiment 7, as well as a little tutorial on how to actually use the WebMO website. So what we'll be doing in this experiment is we'll be building or calculating molecular orbitals. And when it comes to WebMO, this is a two-step process. So let's take the example of hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. To calculate the molecular orbitals of hydrochloric acid, we first build the molecule in WebMO. So this would be a pretty simple diatomic. We'd see a bond between the hydrogen and chlorine atoms. Looks something like this. And then the first phase is what we call geometry optimization, or as I'll abbreviate it here, geo-opt. Now it's really important to optimize the geometry. You probably won't notice much of a change in the structure after you do geometry optimization because if you clean up the structure in the first phase, it'll be pretty close to the ideal already. However, it's important to do this step because when the molecular orbitals are calculated, the geometry is not changed at all. And so we need to make sure that the geometry is optimal, lowest energy from the quantum mechanical perspective, before we actually calculate the molecular orbitals. But that step two is actually calculating the MOs. And what that will give you, essentially, not in graphical form, but you'll have all the information to construct it, is an orbital energy diagram which lists the molecular orbitals and their energies, how many electrons they contain, so we might have some filled orbitals that are lower in energy, some unfilled orbitals that are higher in energy, something like this. And you'll also be able to see the orbital shapes. So for each molecular orbital, you'll be able to select it and over top of the picture of the molecule, you'll see the shape of the molecular orbital. So this lowest energy orbital might be something like a bonding orbital between the hydrogen and chlorine atoms that looks something like this. Now let's talk a little bit about how to use the actual WebMO website. So after you log in, you'll see a table of your former jobs. You can click on the molecular formula to actually pull up the results of an old job. And you'll want to focus on the molecular orbital calculation results. Remember that geometry optimization is kind of a step en route to the molecular orbitals, and the results of the MO calculations are where the most useful and meaningful information is. To create a new job, go to New Job, Create New Job at the top toolbar, and you'll see an editor appear that looks something like this. There are a couple of different ways to build molecules in WebMO. I like to build the sigma bonding skeleton first using just the default atoms and then change the atom type and add multiple bonds after that, so that's what I'll show you here. Let's build the sulfate anion, which is SO4 2 minus. We know that sulfate contains a central sulfur atom and four oxygens radiating outward. Carbon is the default, so these just appear as gray atoms initially, but we're about to change them. To change the atom type, use the periodic table tool, which you see right here. This will pull out an entire periodic table. We'll click sulfur, click the central atom to change it to sulfur, and then we'll repeat the process for the outer atoms to change them to oxygen. Now we know that the Lewis structure of sulfate contains multiple bonds, and it's important to tell WebMO where these multiple bonds are located. To add a multiple bond, you can just use the build tool. It doesn't matter which atom you have selected. Click on the first atom, drag to the second atom, and you'll see a double bond appear. If we did that again, a triple bond would appear. Do that to one other sulfur oxygen bond. And now we have the correct Lewis structure of sulfur in terms of the bonding pattern, two double bonds and two single bonds, but we're still missing the formal charges. So SO4 2 minus contains two negative formal charges on these singly bound oxygen atoms, right? And we need to tell WebMO that those are present, otherwise it won't use the right number of electrons in the calculation. To do this, use the adjust tool, which you see right here. Right click on the atom whose formal charge you want to change, click charge, and then change it to negative one in our case. Apply OK. Do the same for the other atom, negative one, apply OK. And now we have the correct Lewis structure of sulfate plugged into WebMO. But there's still something missing here, right? And if you rotate this, if you use the rotate tool to kind of rotate it around, you can see that the geometry is not right. It's kind of a square planar geometry right now, and we know that's incorrect. Sulfate should be tetrahedral. WebMO can take care of this automatically. Once you've got the Lewis structure down correctly, go to cleanup, 
comprehensive idealized or use the idealized comprehensive cleanup button here. Looks kind of like a uh, paintbrush or a broom. And WebMO will calculate the optimized geometry using some basic parameters and some basic bond lengths. And we can rotate this and see that now the structure is indeed tetrahedral. So the optimized geometry won't look that different from this, but this is just kind of a quick and dirty estimate done by WebMO. So the optimized geometry will be slightly different. Click the continue button to move ahead. We'll use QChem to optimize. The next page shows you a list of options, and the most important one to change is the calculation option. We want to do a geometry optimization first. The default basis set and exchange are fine, and all the other options are fine, so we'll just click continue to power through. And now, as you can see, the job is running here. It'll show you the time that's elapsed, and you can cancel the job or see what's going on. For the most part here, we'll just wait for a while, and the page will automatically refresh. Once the job is done, you'll notice that the status has changed to complete, and you'll see that the molecular formula has changed to a link. So to see the results, we can just click on that link. To take the results of a geometry optimization calculation and use them for a molecular orbital calculation, click on that link, it'll take you to the results page, and click this tiny button at the bottom labeled New Job Using This Geometry. This will take the current geometry, which remember we just optimized, and allow you to use it in a new job. So it's plugged it directly into an editor window, the same type that we worked with initially. We can immediately power through. Don't worry about symmetrization. We'll stay with QChem. And now, rather than doing a geometry optimization, we're going to do a molecular orbital calculation. So select molecular orbitals. All of the other options are OK. And again, the job will say it's running, and the page will refresh automatically. Molecular orbital jobs tend to be very quick because the geometry of the molecule isn't changed at all. And so we can again click on the molecular formula to pull up the job results. And now we can see the results of the calculation. So it's really important to understand what this molecular orbital results page is telling you. The basic structure is here at the top. And if we scroll down a bit, you can see information about the partial charges on every atom so that we can see, for example, the sulfur atom is substantially positively charged and the oxygens are all substantially negatively charged. And you can also see information about the molecular orbitals. So what you're seeing here, the orbital number increases as the energy of the orbital increases. It's really just a way to index the orbital. And I'll draw your attention to two other columns. The occupancy, that's the number of electrons present, and the energy, which shows you the energy of the corresponding orbital. So from this, we could build out an orbital energy diagram, right? Now to see the actual shapes of the orbitals, select the magnifying glass icon in the far right column. You can see it says view if we roll over it. And you'll see at the top, now the molecular orbital has appeared. For a filled orbital, the places where you see red and blue lobes are locations where electrons are likely to be. And once you've pulled up one, notice that you can change the orbital displayed using this table on the left, which contains the same information that you would see at the bottom of the page.